Hello everyone, you're watching Ujama, and I'm your host, Michael Dorsonville. So, what does it mean to express yourself? Well, expressing yourself allows you to show how you feel about a certain person, place, or thing. This can be done through many forms, music, painting, speaking, dancing, and many other ways. In general, what we call arts. When was the last time that you made some sort of art, or that you stopped to appreciate someone else's art? Have you ever been walking down the street and seen some really amazing graffiti art on the wall and wonder who did it? Or maybe, have you ever walked into a space and it was just empty walls and you felt a little weird, like there's something missing? Have you ever noticed that art, public art specifically, is the one thing that makes places memorable? According to the Americans for the Arts, places with strong public art expressions break the trend of blandness and sameness and give communities a stronger sense of place and identity. On today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at how bringing arts into public or open spaces benefit our society by helping build connections and creating stronger communities. Our guest today is a young woman who helps bring the arts to the neighborhoods of New York, such as Harlem and Hunts Point. She is the program coordinator of the Laundromat Project. She has also worked with, as an organizer with Latino and other working class communities through Make the Road New York and New Immigrant Community Empowerment. And as a fellow with the Center for the Neighborhood Leadership, she holds a bachelor's from Hunter College in Romance Languages and Political Science, where she studied past and present social movements in Latin America. Welcome to the show, Yvette Ramirez. So tell me, who, who is Yvette Ramirez? Who is Yvette Ramirez? Mm -hmm. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on paper, um, mm -hmm. I, so I'm an arts administrator. Mm -hmm. I am a native New Yorker. I'm from cool. Queens, and I rep it very hard. Oh, okay. um, from the story of Queens. <laughs> um, and I'm also um, a neural historian. So okay. I'm also really interested in, um, I believe, in like telling the stories and narratives okay. of our communities, specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, my parents are from Bolivia, so I'm oh. Bolivian American, so I'm really interested in also like that specific narrative, mm -hmm. I feel, within the very broad Latinx, Latino yeah. diaspora, like all of, we all come from very just different, different backgrounds, different histories, different, and I think it's important that we all amplify it, okay. especially, so yeah, that's what I'm about. Um, so what got you interested in the arts at first? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh my god. So um, I actually grew up in a very musical household, mm -hmm. uh, so my so my, my dad's a musician. Um, okay. He also is a graphic designer. Oh, so I'm a graphic designer too. Really yeah, awesome. Yeah. 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 So I I grew up around that mm -hmm. um, as someone who just always I think pushed me in terms of like being just visually creative. Mm -hmm. And when I obviously was thinking about college, I am also like really into history. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, I want to do art history. Yeah. Um, but um, obviously, I don't know if you maybe mm -hmm. you know. I feel like a lot of like Latino or just like a lot of immigrants are like they're like no you're gonna go to school to be like a doctor or a lawyer yeah. like yeah. that's some of the arts it's like kind of a hobby thing so mm -hmm. I think I was really dissuaded to kind of do so I was gonna go to school for I was gonna go to I ended up doing political science as you said okay. in my bio mm -hmm. and but something about you know but something about just like the arts uh, push you know just kind of was in the back of my head yeah. and I got into community organizing mm -hmm. um, and I really saw the power that like popular theater mm -hmm. and the arts also played in um, youth organizing yeah. and immigrant organizing. So yeah. the community organizing and the, the arts kind of went hand in hand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. At least I, 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 I believe that they mm -hmm. should go hand in hand yeah. and I don't think I always, I don't think that, I, I think now it's maybe people are more open to it but I think before the idea of the arts and organizing wasn't super like, I felt like, like again, mm -hmm. I don't think it kind of 
wasn't like an organic thing. Yeah. And I think now, I think it's people are taking notice of artists and creative people and to, to have them at the table. But I yeah. think before when I was start doing it, it was very like, oh, this is something that's just very like, mm -hmm. you won't have money for it. It's not that important. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, what was the last piece of art that caught your eye unexpectedly when you were on your way somewhere or doing something? Huh, um, okay. Well, <laughs> I, okay, well, I actually was at, well, I was at the Met, so I wasn't mm -hmm. like at a random place. Yeah. Um, I was at the Met and they ha recently had a, a show, uh, mm -hmm. David Hockney, who's like a famous mm -hmm. British uh, mm -hmm. painter who is known for like California, like landscapes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the show just wrapped up like a couple of weeks ago. Oh. And so he's a very famous artist and I've seen his work, but I had come across another artist mm -hmm. called Ramiro Gomez Jr., who is an artist from from California, from it's from LA. Mm -hmm. He actually, um, his he's a first generation American, so his parents are like immigrants. I think they were domestic workers or, yeah. or like you know. And he also was a, like a nanny basically. Oh. And That's he cool. basically saw like he saw the paintings of someone who was he was very influenced. Mm -hmm. But he, so what he ended up doing actually ends it. But you know, so the the David Hockney uh, artist basically has these pristine like pools, and you think of like kind of a Beverly Hills, right? Mm -hmm. It's very pretty, very taken care of. Oh, he would paint things like that. Yeah, oh. but the guy who I'm talking about, Ramiro, he actually because he knew who are the people that kind of made those things beautiful. So there had to be gardeners. Oh yeah. There has oh, to be okay. domestic workers. There has yeah. to be pool like people that like can we maintain the the, the pool. So we added a brown like brown people like you know like people that are doing the work black mm. and brown people in those landscapes mm. and it was a really cool intervention mm. and I really that and I feel like when I saw that painting at the Met even though it was you know the original one that you see in your textbooks if mm -hmm. you you know for art history um, I thought about you know Ramiro's version of that mm -hmm. and I re realized how important it is that there are artists that are ha ex have experiences like maybe like I've had or other people had yeah. of you know of you know dealing with like being p a p person of color you know having parents that were like domestic workers or farm workers mm -hmm. or whatever and and because you know you can think oh it's beautiful it's great but obviously someone had to do that to make it look that beautiful um how has the arts helped you in everyday life and how has that shaped you to be the person you are today yeah um I, I again I think um the I think I so I think social media has actually been something that's been mm -hmm. uh, people I can say a lot of things about it and I also agree that there is fallbacks so then people are just like too into it whatever but yeah. one of the things I really have appreciated of how m how visible it's made a lot of creative people and also people have access to social media now so you can like you know do work mm -hmm. read poems about your own experience and you can share it with tons of people and they'll share and then you know it kind of creates this kind of chain so I think having able to be in a, the social media age mm -hmm. and seeing a lot of brown and black and just POC people that also yeah. like are different you know like just different perspectives mm -hmm. share their their narratives and their voice and having fortunately I also follow a lot of people that you know my friend you know like yeah. I, f I fe feel like I will see what who my friends are mm -hmm. but I feel seeing that has really validated my own experience and I think we all sometimes are like oh like my s you know I'm not I think having not seen myself reflected in, in media, reflected myself in paintings or in museums or in galleries, um, mm -hmm. you tend to think that, oh, my story's not important or yeah. it's something that doesn't matter, so you yeah. know? And I'm sure you know what I'm talking yeah, about. And so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think having, seeing a lot of other people, young people are just, you know, that are kind of beginning to take ownership of that in the mm -hmm. in whether it's all the means of doing it and seeing that yeah. again and again it's just been super affirming for me to be like okay like I I want to make something or I want to create something mm -hmm. um, and also really as again for me as a, someone who's with Laundromat Project really make sure that I'm as an institution like we are providing resources for artists that are of yeah. color from New York City um, working class you know mm -hmm. that that because in the end it also comes to like what supports do you have mm -hmm. what what's the yeah. resources and I think it's important that uh, Obviously, I feel that, you know, it, it's a greater conversation um, of, of privilege and all these things, but mm -hmm. at least w with the Laundrette Project, that's the way that I'm able to kind of uh, do that work, mm -hmm. you know, in terms yeah. of knowing, you know, when, when picking who are we going to work with this year, you know, what are the topics we're going to talk about? So I feel that's something that's been really, really great for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
and even something like Black Panther, yeah. you know, I think that's like a really bigger sort of like, and again, you know, that, that's obviously like arts mm. and culture. Like I think that was super affirming for tons of people mm -hmm. to see themselves like in a, in a way that was just reflective of like such a positive and beautiful and such graceful way. So mm -hmm. I think that, I think that it's, it, 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 it is affirming and I think you, I think it's so important. It's mm -hmm. so, it's, I, I think it's tied into health. I think it's tied into like, I think it's tied into like also like um, mental health. Like it's just, it's so vital. Yeah, it's not yeah. just leisure. I think it's, it, yeah. I, yeah. Well, talking about arts, we also went out to the streets to see what people do in their daily life to express themselves. So we're here with Tasha, and we're doing an episode about music, so we just want to know what, what, how do you express yourself, whether it be music, writing, something like that. Uh, definitely music. I love to dance and sing and, you know, videos. How do you express yourself? Um, I am a storyteller, a writer, a musician, so I express myself through words, through movement, through sounds, through silence. I also express myself reading. I, I feel I grow inside and I dream and I fly when I'm reading. Um, I express myself through poetry and music. I do R&B and hip hop. My artist name is Since 93. Um, I have a management team by AMA. Um, they're from Jersey. I've been writing music since 16 years old and 24, so it's about um, eight years now. About eight years, so um, I recorded Maino Studio downtown. I've been doing music for a few I'm about to drop my first album within a few weeks. What inspires me? Um, people I interact with every day, my personal adventures in life, you know, everything that I go through, people I meet, like yourselves, like Robert Chinois, you know, my family, all the other artists that are doing it, God, you know, everything inspires me. Thank you. So Yvette, tell us, what, what is the Laundry Mac Project? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're a community-based arts organization. Okay. Um, we're about 11 years old, um, and we work in Harlem and Bedside and Hunts Point Longwood. Mm -hmm. And so basically, we're an, we're an organization that believes that the arts can be tools to yeah. move forward social justice, social justice initiatives and movement building. Mm -hmm. um, and we started with the idea that our neighborhoods um, and basically everything that's, that's in it are cultural assets. So you don't mm -hmm. have to go to a museum or gallery like in Manhattan, like in downtown yeah. Manhattan to access art because literally it's like around in like the people, it's around in the spaces, it's around in like our traditions and cultures yeah. um, that it's right there. So um, we, our work centers on artist development mm -hmm. and it also centers on uh, community uh, arts education work or community-based mm -hmm. arts education work and so um, yeah, so. That's a yeah. In a nutshell, right? <laughs> in a nutshell. Um, what changes have you seen throughout communities where the laundry, the laundry project has worked? Yeah, so mm. I think that one of the so, so I in particular work with the mm. Create Change Artist Do Development Program, mm -hmm. and basically that program is open to it's a, it's a, like a six month residency program. Yeah. Um, we provide an artist with um, a production budget. We provide uh -huh. of uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Oh yeah. We provide them with an honorarium <laughs> budget, yeah. an, an honorarium. So for the artist of, of uh, now, it's seven thousand five hundred dollars for the six months, okay. and then also provide them with like a lot of trainings. Um, so uh, workshops and studio visits and portfolio review sessions, right? Mm -hmm. And so basically the artists that apply, it's only open to artists of color okay. and artists that are accountable to the neighborhood that I listed. So Bedside, Harlem, and Hunts Point Longwood. Okay. Um, and that the and the projects have to happen in public space. So yeah. they have to happen. So before it was it was only laundromats. Mm -hmm. Um but then we opened it up so now so projects have happened in beauty salons and they've happened outside the bodegas, they've happened huh. in community gardens. So the idea of like being people, you are doing your thing where you live or you are accountable to and people mm -hmm. are kind of, and also the, where people are, are already at, okay. you know? And so I think one of the things that I like feel that 
at least through my work, I've made more, a lot of impact has been, because also like a lot of the artists, unfortunately, if you see who has access again, like mm -hmm. to residencies, to opportunities, it's yeah. not, it's not people from our communities, unfortunately. So I think like ha maybe have gone to art school, you okay. know, cause something also, it's like a, it's a very also like ex expensive thing, you know? So a lot of artists that I work with are like from New York or they're like young artists yeah. and we've been able to provide them like uh, support that like you know institutional mm -hmm. support or been able to recommend them after the program's over to like you know to speak at conferences or mm -hmm. other opportunities and so I think being able to support those like kind of uh, you know kind of growing uh, careers that they're yeah. having as artists and seeing them kind of like grow and then be you know and 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 do their thing mm -hmm. has been super inspiring for 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 me because a lot of times like a lot of artists you know we've had artists that have talked about like trans issues mm -hmm. other artists have talked about you know like working with you know within like police brutality you know mm -hmm. other artists working within um the idea of like kind of afrofuturism so it's like a lot of you know working with like uh you know like kind of the Puerto Rican diaspora so it's been yeah. just all these communities and experiences that obviously like I you know me and other staff members necessarily don't have but these artists do and yeah. they care and they're accountable to and they're you know they're doing something that hopefully is providing some sort of like experience for their fellow community members so i think supporting these artists and it, i think for me has been like really great because i think mm -hmm. artists are part of the ecosystem they're part of like our communities as well and i think like if we're, if we're supporting them um mm -hmm. that's that's really yeah. imp that's important yeah okay. it's really important yeah um what makes the laundromat project unique from other programs, like other uh, music programs or yeah. art programs? Yeah, yeah. I think that the Laundry Project, we're very like we have a saying that we're like, you know, you're once you're part of the family, you're part <laughs> of the family. <laughs> um, we have over 150 artists who okay. have been part of Laundry Project's uh, residency fellowship mm -hmm. programs through, through its in inception, so mm -hmm. since 2006. Oh, yeah, okay, so yes. it's been for a minute, yeah. um, and so you know we and we've like so we have this like list list serve mm -hmm. that after the artist finish the program they're added to and we've seen like just conversations you yeah. know between people that are like writers and like uh we've had people that are like uh theater makers mm -hmm. and visual artists and dancers just kind of just come together and all of them all of them are united by the thing that they, they believe that art should be accessible and should like uh, address okay. issues that are you know that i think that are obviously important for like communities mm -hmm. and so yeah. so i think that like this we definitely i think sometimes you tend to think of like maybe like art spaces is very sort of like this mm -hmm. sort of like I don't know kind like of cold or frigid yeah, you know mm -hmm. like you're yeah, like okay yeah. you know and I've definitely felt the same you know even mm -hmm. having worked in the arts I still feel it sometimes in spaces I'm like I don't know if I'm welcomed here yeah. but I feel we're very like you know I think we're very kind of this like kind of family like you know we got you and people come into the office and you know and, or, or you know ask us for hey can you support mm -hmm. with this and you know so I feel that there's this accessibility to not uh, to the staff, yeah. to our resources, and to also uh, the greater network that we're able to provide. That I think I'm, I, I, you know, I, 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 I feel it's very special. And another thing also to say that the Lawn Project actually is founded by a woman of a black woman, a woman of mm. color. So yeah, leadership entirely mm. like POC, PO, like p people of color. Mm -hmm. And so I also, I also think that's something that's very common in terms of the arts. Uh, organizations or institutions where you know literally you have like that voice in terms of yeah. our board in terms of like our, our executive director Kemi mm -hmm. Lysamy who's an amazing uh, uh, someone who I admire very much yeah. so I think it's something else that's to say I think when you have leadership that is thinking about these things and, and it's also and cares very much and also mm -hmm. in a way it's impacted I think it's very much different opposed yeah. to saying oh I wanted something because you know it's it's mm -hmm. trendier because it's whatever you know so I think that makes us different okay. from the batch, yeah. Okay. And also, I think we're also open. We know we don't do everything perfect, yeah. you know. Um, there's and always the room for yeah, yeah. There's always room for growth, and mm -hmm. even if we're 12 years old, so we definitely have um, taken like feedback and like mm -hmm. you know, and, and take you sh y'all should maybe do this or that, and so really have like tried to really because also times are changing. You yeah. know, it's not 20 2006 is. Mm -hmm. is we are not there anymore we're so years ago, yeah. right yeah. so you know for example like part of our like uh training sessions like that for create change we've added like a racial justice like uh -huh. you know workshop you know like how do you do art in under the white gaze yeah it's a very real thing you know and so like being very explicit about these mm -hmm. things you know because i think like we we definitely don't want to i think gloss over a lot of uh, you know things that are very real and happening mm -hmm. in in the arts quote unquote so Okay. So yeah, I think maybe that's answer your question. Um, 
Growing up as a child, how do you, how would programs such as the Laundromat Project would have helped you growing up? And <laughs> yeah. yeah, that mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I really think it would have been amazing to have something like the Laundromat Project, um, okay. or even something like like this place. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm from Astoria. Mm -hmm. um, Astoria is it's it, it's predominantly when I was growing up, it was predominantly Greek mm -hmm. and like Irish, and oh, you know, okay. and so whatever. So it's like very like blue, you know, kind of like working class like. Um, but mm -hmm. it also there was like some Latinos, specifically like more towards Long Island City because I grew up on the border of Long Island City and Astoria. Yeah. So I definitely do remember um, that when I was in Astoria, I would, I think I, I sometimes would be very like, even walking the streets, mm -hmm. I would feel sometimes like I had to act a certain way. Oh, okay. Because okay. you sometimes had people that were like, you know, looking at you, kind of yeah. just like surveilling you. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't be me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time, like, my mom actually owns a beauty salon in Astoria. Oh. And so I remember, like, her customers, who a lot of them are Greek ladies, mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh my God, your English is so great. You don't, like, have an accent. And I'm mm -hmm. from here. I was born here and yeah. everything, you know. And so those sort of, like, internalized things mm -hmm. that you grow as, like, a, uh, for me as, like, a brown, brown girl, I yeah. was, like, always like, Oh my God! I have to do this. I can't mm -hmm. be loud. I can't. You know, I think I was always, you know, policing myself basically. Yeah. You know, so I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be a stereotype, quote okay. unquote. So you know, and so I think had I been able to access a program that talked a lot about this, talked a lot mm -hmm. about like being proud of who you are, mm -hmm. embracing like you know like self like self love and self care and like you know all that stuff, I think it would have been so much of a difference in terms of like accepting who I was mm -hmm. when I was younger, as opposed to maybe as a tw as a 20 year old and even yeah. now you know mm -hmm. and so um i i so for example i used to um, i used to be part of this um when i was like a, uh, like a 16 year old i used to be part of this museum yeah. uh youth board mm -hmm. and it was a museum of so my neighborhood so you know like i i would like, walk there from home and i would like you know we would use like youth uh, programming and i would help and i ended up getting an internship afterwards and I remember that I was like, I was helping out with the with the youth, like the family programs in the weekends. Mm -hmm. And that museum actually was not from not from Ni with Nitra okay. from the project. It was like very close to the projects, yeah. and the programs that they had were free. Mm -hmm. And I remember that um, I literally worked there, worked there for maybe like a two years, or and I saw probably 10 families of color oh. total yeah. in the two years I worked there for the f to go to the free programs. Okay. So they were all families that came from Manhattan yeah. or from Brooklyn in that were white, <laughs> that were white. Okay. And so, right. And mm -hmm. so the, f and so like, I didn't see any Latino families. I didn't see any black families. Mm -hmm. um, the gallery faces were all people that were like, nobody from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. was from there, so I knew who the neighborhood was. Mm -hmm. And so I think once I started learning about like, basically why, why is it that, you know, POC people are like mostly in jails or why is it that, you know, we're mostly the ones affected by like, you know, being in bad schools or mm -hmm. like this and that. I, 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 but I, I thought it was like, oh, it's our fault. But no, it was, there's actually a, a systemic thing mm -hmm. that in history that is why a lot of it, we're positioned this way. Mm -hmm. And once I think I learned about that in college and I got to learn like real history, I yeah. was like pissed and I was like, I don't want to, like, I'm done with this. And that's how I started doing organizing, actually. Because I was in a museum. I was working in a museum. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so I think that, like, um, being part of a, like, a program like Laundromat Project or being part of just, like, just, I think, more social justice things earlier mm -hmm. would have been, I think, for me, just a lot. Yeah. It would have been just, like, I think, big help owning up a lot in yeah. my voice, not as opposed to doing it when I was, when I was an adult. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. before we move forward, we have a historical fact to share with you. Take a look. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fact of the Day. I'm Jude Coltman, and I'm here today to talk about arts during the Harlem Renaissance. Aaron Douglas was a major figure of the Harlem Renaissance, being both a prominent visual artist and an influential educator. He was born in the town of Topeka, Kansas in 1899. He attended the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, where he earned his Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1922. After, he taught art at Lincoln High School in Kansas City, Missouri for two years. He then later moved to Harlem in 1925 during his renaissance. During his time in Harlem, Douglas became an illustrator with his work in high demand. He contributed countless notable illustrations, including those for the National Urban League and the NAACP. 
He also was behind illustrations for renowned poets of the time period, such as James Weldon Johnson. In the 1930s, he helped many African-American artists get recognition by the Works Projects Association in order to be able to complete public works. He even got the attention of W.E.B. Du Bois and Alan Locke, who were looking for a young African-American who was able to express himself through their culture. In 1934, he was commissioned by the Works Projects Administration to paint a series of murals in the New York Public Library on 135th Street, which in present day is the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. His murals were all over cities such as New York City, Chicago, Nashville, Tennessee, and Greensboro, North Carolina. In the late 1930s, Douglas created many of his most famous works such as Aspects of Negro Life, a series of murals depicting the African-American experience. Late in this decade, he founded the art department at Fisk University and spent three years at the Teachers College at Columbia University to gain a master's degree in art education. In 1963, Aaron Douglas was invited to the White House by President John F. Kennedy. He also received an honorary degree from Fisk University in 1973. He remained an active painter and educator for the rest of his life until passing away in 1979. To the present, he is referred to as the father of black American art. Aaron Douglas' life story can teach us that art is not only a way to express yourself, but to express the feelings and experience of an entire community or society. And passing on this skill to future generations amplifies its value. A brush and some paints has more power than you may have at first thought. Well, looks like time has ran out for this segment, but the events still remain in our history today. Thank you for listening to today's Fact of the Day. As always, history today isn't the history of tomorrow. Get out there and make your own history, and we'll see you next time. Welcome back. So, according to the website, the laundromat project defines their mission as to amplify the creativity that already exists within communities by using art and culture to build community networks, solve problems, and enhance their sense of ownership in the places where they live, work, and grow. Uh, talk to us about that. What is the important, importance of letting people have ownership of public spaces? Yeah, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that, um, there are, I just, I, I just, I, I even like walking on Lexington mm -hmm. and I see like street vendors yeah. and I see like just people hanging out. I, I sometimes have walking forward and I see people playing dominoes also. Like, yeah. you know, and thinking about like also where I'm from in Queens named Jackson Heights, you know, you have like just people cutting together, you know, and just like talking like, like yeah. loud and with their music, you know, and that's how I feel like this is the New York that mm -hmm. I grew up in. Yeah. Um, so I, I yeah, yeah, and I feel it's like, it's so affirming to mm -hmm. see like people coming together, people talking to each other, yeah. people like, you know, and I think it's also like, I think at the very base of just like letting you know, hey, it's how I'm doing, you know, just kind yeah. of a sense of like, kind of just like communal, mm -hmm. like, you know, that. So I think it's important that, that there be spaces that are public where people can c come and gather. Mm -hmm. And this is why I also really appreciate not only like the streets, mm -hmm. uh, like plazas or parks or, you know, but also like I think small businesses, mm -hmm. you know, like like I know like barber shops, <laughs> like for me, beauty salon, like, uh, like people like come together and talk, oh my God, they just, did you hear about like, Sarita, <laughs> like, you know, she left or, yeah. or this happened, her well, daughter got married. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, and or in the corner of Bodega. So like, yeah. I like, I just feel it's like, a, it's their meeting spaces mm -hmm. where people come and talk. And I think it's important that, that those are, that those are maintained mm -hmm. and that there are more even public spaces. You know, this is yeah. why it's so sad when you see small businesses closing, mm -hmm. uh, being replaced by like, you know, by like Dwayne Reeds and yeah. banks that like, who's, no one's gonna go and mm -hmm. meet and congregate there, you know, or, or you have like, people I think also like kind of policing also like you know uh, just who's allowed to access spaces you yeah. know I think that's something also in terms of police and whatnot so I think it's really I, I think it's super important and mm -hmm. so I think for the laundromat project that's was sort of at the at the center of our of our, of our mission you know yeah. is idea that so we started with the idea of like why we call a laundromat project is because mm -hmm. the founder Risa Wilson 
was like people need to wash their clothes doesn't matter like how much you know like in terms of like what the race is yeah. or like how much money they make like because back then you know apartments usually didn't have now they do but they didn't really have laundromats okay. um washing machines right yeah. um, you know uh, at least apartments because they were she was started in bed style you go to laundromats so you just and then, and then you're, you're washing your clothes you have to obviously you're waiting yeah. um while it's being washed or, or dry so there's like kind of wait time so she had the idea of bringing artists to a laundromat or then okay. also later on bringing um, art workshops yeah. uh, taught by, you know, like local community members that were mm -hmm. artists as well for that to be sort of a sort of a conversation, yeah. you know, because the artists that, you know, were doing the projects or doing the workshops, like they also were addressing mm -hmm. issues. It wasn't just like, OK, let's cut, let's just make, you know, like a drawing. No, it yeah. was it was like, let's there's let's make this activity linked on, you know, on like uh you know police brutality or mm. on the fact that like access to healthy foods or the idea of like you know or, or other issues so and so it could be sort of like oh it's happening to you too or me too you know yeah. like so sort of like that sort of the connection that yeah. spark oh, okay. that or that connection yeah. exactly so i think like and that's a th and i think that's why they're so important okay. they're so important i think they're also important i think for a city like n new york because i think for public spaces is, is the very aesthetics of the city yeah. um that is just Mm -hmm. It was just, yeah, it was just, yeah. I think, very much people, uh, part of people's like identity that are from the city or, 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 or like, love yeah. the city. And so to see it change the way it's changing, um, um, I, I, I see people that are, like, don't talk to each other anymore mm -hmm. or kind of, like, you know, just, like, super silent or just, or I don't know, you know. Yeah. Um, it's really sad to see that. Mm -hmm. um, so we we're, we're really, we hope that... Um, through our projects. And then also just to add, we also have a, we do have a community center space in, in Kelly Street okay. on Longwood section of the Bronx. Um, mm. We, it's on, it's, it's basically an apartment that, yeah. uh, uh, based on an apartment that was transformed into like art space. So we actually, you know, there's a community garden there. So we're, we've been doing work there with artists, local artists from the Bronx mm -hmm. for the past like two years. Okay. So um, called the Kelly Street Collaborative Space. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, as well, yeah. Um, in what ways have the artists that work with the uh, Laundromat Project helped the community to start conversation about challenges they face? So this, like, is how do they talk yeah. about challenges they face every day? Yeah, yeah. I think it's again, it's it, a lot of the artists that we work with mm. are, you know, like they are part of their own pockets of yeah. community. I feel like somewhere mm. like El like Harlem or the Barrio is like yeah. there's d different like little groups, you mm -hmm. know, different like immigrant groups, different people that are like, you know, that are like uh, in this project. Yeah, project, yeah, yeah, like right. So I feel that like they're they've conducted like in those little spaces they've they they've facilitated like conversations. So remember we mm. had an artist. Havana Fisher Newby, who did mm -hmm. a project in 2006 um, in Harlem, sh she did a, s a stop animation project mm -hmm. called um, uh, Harlem's. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's <laughs> Harlem's. But her, her name is Havana Fisher Newby, mm -hmm. and basically she worked with Community Voices Her. She worked with Other Hurts Her Soul. She worked with like also like her own like sh uh, sh she's a Harlem native, so she worked also with people that she knew, and they did. Um, stop animations mm -hmm. um, basically on memories that they had in Harlem okay. um, and in the end as a culminating event for the project because she collected all these stop animations and ended up making kind of like a sh little short film yeah. um, she ended up doing kind of a barbecue summit okay. um, so she kind of had like food and mm -hmm. Hannah had like you know in, in the very culture that is also Harlem you know mm -hmm. like and you know black Harlem you yeah. know because she that she was like you know it has to have this have to have that and then we can talk about also like what the process was for all of us mm. as part of this experience so yeah. um so I think the artists um I don't know some say if like you know I can say like oh well they achieved like this like you yeah, know yeah. like policy lab but I think having those moments of joy and having those moments of just sharing and and that is so important i think okay. uh for like for for our communities and necess necessary to come together and just Definitely. to eat together and to like yeah. talk and laugh together over really good stuff you know over mm -hmm. good things that are like that are like that are most importantly let out by people that are from mm -hmm. the neighborhoods you know yeah. i think a lot of times um we d one of the things that we definitely really are uh, really um adamant about mm -hmm. A lot of times artists can come that are th that they're like, I'm going to come to do this project. I think is really important. And yeah. I think it's good. They, they, a lot of times like I have all the ideas mm -hmm. and it's like, no, 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 you you have like one has skills and one has ideas. But you come into a neighborhood or community and you say, hey, so mm -hmm. this is my idea. 
-hmm. and it's a it's from there it's a conversation yeah and i think I, you know sometimes like we can think oh i have this great idea but when you want to work with people and you in the name of like, also committees and issues and you ha it's it's a process yeah. and you can't come uh, you know and i think a lot of artists that t one like there's that's a lot i think um a blind spot for some folks mm -hmm. you know and and when you throw in someone who's not even from there, or mm. maybe it's like, you know, it, it's, it gets very complicated. So yeah. I can understand why also sometimes people are also like, maybe like suspicious of the arts. So like, oh, the arts, like, you know, that's something that's not for me or that's something that's like, you know, it, this and that. So there is, I think, ways to do it that okay. are ethical as well. Yeah. 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 Um, for the people that don't have access to this type of program, where do you recommend them to go if they don't have the access to that type of resource? Yeah. Um, hmm. So... Well, one, I mean, so we have, for, mm -hmm. so for Laundry Project, we definitely recommend y'all to check out the Kelly Street space mm -hmm. in the Bronx. Like we have um, Saturdays, we have, op we have on our website, we have like a list of events that we mm -hmm. have. We have wor free workshops. We have yoga classes in the mornings on Saturdays. We do like tons of events also with like uh, the garden committee, which is like, um, which also runs the Kelly Street Garden. So yeah. that's something that's uh, open to everybody. Um, we also, you follow like our social media. We like, uh, um, shout out a lot of artists, um, a lot of organizers are doing like really cool work and mm -hmm. artists as well. Um, so that's definitely one thing. Um, so definitely check us out online. Mm -hmm. um, other things, hmm, I don't know. I feel like. Is there anywhere they can go like yeah, just locally? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think like here and like obviously like. I would say like a lot of museums, even though like sometimes they could be whack, but they actually have a lot of they have they actually have a lot of free stuff. Yeah. Like if you so if you check out like what they're doing, like, you know, on like their calendar list of calendars, like I would definitely do that. You know, like I am, um, uh, they have a lot of free stuff, and yeah. and they need people. So I think that's one thing to to consider. Also, like libraries also are mm -hmm. really like they also like sometimes bring artists as well. Um, so. Uh, there's so yeah, there's tons yeah. of yeah resources that um, one social media is a great way to start. Okay. You follow like a lot of like museums, you follow like a lot of like just organizations. They are always like saying free screen to this, free screen to that, or, yeah. or this and that. So I would recommend doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today, yeah. Yvette. We really enjoyed having you. And to our viewers, thank you guys for tuning into Ujama. Follow us at the Youth Channel on Instagram and YouTube for more info and updates. Till next time.